Greg Daniels behind the scenes, check. Work plays comedy, check. Steve Carell is the main character, check. So that equals laughs, right? Netflix supposedly got all the right ingredients, so why is their new series Space Force so absolutely terrible? The United States Space Force is actually a real space warfare branch of the US Armed Forces launched by Donald Trump in late 2019. And this new Netflix series Space Force is obviously inspired by those real events and is an attempt to make some sort of satirical comedy. But what ended up happening was less a political commentary, but rather an attempt to recreate The Office, but instead of a dysfunctional paper company, it's now a dysfunctional branch of the American government. You can't deny that Space Force is trying to recapture the magic of The Office. Aruba, make up. Ooh, I wanna take you. Feeling hot, hot, hot. Bermuda, Bahama, <laughs> pretty mama. Feeling hot, hot. But it falls well short of that mark. The Office is honestly one of the greatest comedies ever and after it went up on Netflix, they managed to bring in even more beloved fans. So what happened with Space Force? Space Force was co-created by Steve Carell and Greg Daniels, who was behind The Office. And Steve Carell was paid over $10 million for this first season. Netflix definitely thought that they'd found a winning combination. As the foundations of these respective shows Let's have a deep dive and look at what they did right with Michael Scott in The Office and what actually went wrong with Mark Naird in Space Force. I won't be going into detail as to the specific plot points of either The Office or Space Force, but there might be some spoilers ahead, so you have been warned. At the core of who Michael Scott was, was this innate desire to be liked, and more specifically, to be liked by his employees. And while Michael often conducted himself terribly around the office and to his employees, what? often being rude and insulting them, Try my cookie, cookie. Try my harassing them, forcing people to participate in his half-baked ideas. Deep down, everyone knew while Michael could be an ass, his heart was in the right place. And the magic that Steve Carell brought to Michael Scott was that ability to imbue that absurd and idiotic behavior with genuine sincerity and earnestness, making him a lovable buffoon. One that wore you down over time, but eventually won you over. Meanwhile, Mark Naird, is a slightly different character. While often he gets flustered like Michael, and can often be a bit goofy like Michael, he is a lot less likeable than Michael. From the beginning of this series, Mark Ned gets promoted to a four-star general, and is given the unenviable task of launching a new branch of the military, in which the president seems to have created on a whim, the Space Force. What? And while not loving his position, he does bravely dive head on and tries to make something of this program. The issue here is that the reason he wants to succeed so badly isn't because he craves the respect of his employees and peers, as he often dismisses their concerns and just charges forward with whatever half thought out plan he's got, essentially just hoping for the best in his attempt to impress his higher ups and to justify his position as a four star general. But by taking that approach, and a good example is here is when something goes wrong with their recently launched satellite and he essentially forces a chimpanzee in space to go and fix a satellite rather than waiting for the scientists to come up with a legitimate solution. It just gives off massive alpha male attitude. He's too stubborn and too unwilling to compromise. Traits that are somewhat difficult to relate to and sympathize with. And because of this, we definitely don't look at Mark Ned in the same way we look at Michael Scott. One of the best characteristics of Michael Scott is his actual competency as a paper salesman. For the most part, Michael is unaware of his surroundings and he's an idiot. But there are moments in the show where we get to see Michael actually be extremely competent. These moments are in complete contrast to his typical antics. In most situations, he makes an ass out of himself, but in very specific scenarios, his strengths are able to shine through. I don't know. I guess I could give you guys our business, but you have to meet me halfway, okay? Because they're expecting me to make cuts. Well, Corpus gonna go ballistic, but uh, you think we could, Jan? 
Meanwhile, in Space Force, the show depicts Mark Mead as someone who's very serious and he's just generally fairly competent. He's a dedicated company man and he's been in the military most of his life, so he seems like he knows what he's doing. But this gets a little bit confusing. Sometimes he's competent and running the Space Force really well, and then at other times he just seems to lose the plot, lose control, and then he just plays dumb and overconfident. Rest assured, these will be US boots. Boots with US feet in them, I mean. Can't be certain where the boots will actually be made. Maybe Mexico, maybe Portugal. We'll get any bids on the boots. Sort of defaulting into a bit of a Michael Scott mode. But at the end of the day, his character's just not well defined. Sure, we know he wants to serve his country and that he's a good soldier, but that's really the only solid base that we have for him. Sometimes he's thoughtful and reflective, and then sometimes he's just arrogant and foolish. I get that Steve Carell wouldn't want to just redo Michael Scott, but Mark Naird's character is just too vague. And on top of all of that, he's putting on some weird, low, gruff voice. Two hours left. I know that, Chan. Thank you. Wait, 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 wait. Press the laser. Oh, no. He just turned away. Like, why? It just makes it seem like he's doing a bit the whole time. A good example to see the contrast between Michael and Mark Ned in this regard is when Michael Scott goes to Pam's art display and buys her painting of The Office. Look at this one. Wow. You nailed it. This really exemplifies Michael Scott's character. Through all the idiotic stuff he does, and through all the chaos he puts his employees through, at the end of the day, he actually really cares for them. And it's through this contrast, by letting him be essentially useless most of the time, and the fact that he's able to pull through when it matters most, makes his actions all the more impactful. Meanwhile, when we look at the scene, where Mark Ned blows off an important space mission to go rescue his daughter, this scene is trying to show us that he cares more for his family than his job, and he's willing to sacrifice his job for his family. But because he was already seemingly on the outs for his job, the stakes are a lot lower, and the impact of his sudden reliability and competence is significantly reduced. Workplace comedies really rely on the dynamics between co-workers, the interconnected relationships they have, the rivalries, the potential romances, and the complete outliers. And they work because they riff off relationships that are familiar to the audience. Relationships that we as normal people in the real world already have an understanding of. In the office, we mainly focus on the employees of the Scranton Dunder Mifflin branch, each having a somewhat unique and distinguishable quality about them. In the earlier seasons, we're just given a small taste but that eventually rounds out as the series progresses and we get a deeper look into the different relationships the employees have with each other, some taking center stage while others happening in the background. But in the Space Force, the cast is absolutely massive. You've got Dr. Adrian Mallory played by John Malkovich. He's the head scientist that leads a team that includes Jimmy O. Yang. You've got Brad played by Don Lake, a fumbling one-star general who's essentially Ned's receptionist. You've got a social media obsessed press secretary played by Ben Schwartz, essentially doing a Jean Ralphio impression from Parks and Rec. You've got a driven but closed off female pilot played by Tony Newsom. You've got Ned's father played by Fred Willard, rest in peace. You've got Lisa Kudrow as Ned's incarcerated wife. You've got Diana Silva as Ned's bored and rebellious teenage daughter. You've got a Russian spy. You've got a group of astronaut slash spacemen. And all of these characters are just near the base. There's a whole other group of people in Washington. You've got the other heads of the armed services played by Jane Lynch, Patrick Warburton, and Daedric Bader. And in particular, you've got his nemesis, Kit Graviston, played by Noah Emery. And on top of that, you've got other government officials. It, it just goes on and on and on. The cast is absolutely stacked and there are so many characters, the tight-knit familial vibe is impossible to achieve. Ned is pulled in so many directions, he's got issues with the government officials, he's got issues with the scientists, he's got issues with his family, and on top of all of Ned's issues, you've got all these subplots as well. The show is just way too cluttered. In The Office, it was often Michael who was always in the middle of the mess he'd made as a result of his incompetence. Sure, once in a while we get to see Kevin or Creed do something funny and mess up, but mainly, Michael's the one causing all the mishaps. Meanwhile, in Space Force, a lot of the supporting cast are actually more incompetent than Steve Carell's Mark Baird. And that's usually the American characters. And as a result, all of them are just a bit wacky, over the top, and plain stupid. Oh, uh, Yuri's in there. I know. He told me not to say anything. Thank you, Brad. 
and it really saturates the ridiculousness of what's going on at Space Force because everyone is just stupid and ridiculous. <laughs> if Mark Ned was really the only incompetent one, his mistakes would really stick out and that would be the comedic sticking point as the person in charge leading a bunch of actually competent people but in a completely stupid direction. But rather, he seems like he's actually the sensible one trying to rein in all these idiots that actually work at Space Force. The Officers' first season got off to a bit of a shaky start. They definitely hadn't gotten the character of Michael Scott to that sweet spot that we all know and love. He was way more of a douche and a lot less relatable. But going into the second season, the series really found its footing and found its center with Michael Scott. Space Force most definitely had a shaky first season. A crowded cast, confusing subplots, and a very mixed bag of social commentary. Not really willing to take big swings, but rather just tiny little jabs. Steve Carell's Mark Ned has a long way to go to become as iconic as Michael Scott. And it is uncertain if there will be a season two to give this show another shot. I know it is currently doing well on Netflix, being one of the most watched series of late, but it was definitely an expensive series to get made and has come out to a pretty poor critical response. If they do come out with another season, I do hope they can define Ned's character and turn this series around. Otherwise, Space Force will just remain a flop. Thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you thought of Space Force in the comment section down below and let me know what your favorite moment from The Office was. As always, thank you guys again and I'll catch you guys next time.